Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast Discussions on my favorite games, movies, TV shows, anime, comic books, collectibles, and other fun content for gamers and geeks. I'm your host, Jeremy. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. I'm Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis, and you're listening to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, Episode 2. This is the second episode in a series of uh, of podcast episodes that I'm starting up. I hope uh, you saw my previous uh, episode where I'm just starting to do see myself a bit. Nothing too complicated, just wanted to talk about myself earlier. And a big apology to Shigeru Miyamoto. I, I mentioned his name uh, earlier in my previous episode, and I didn't uh, say it properly. And my apologies. I was a little bit hazy. And I was going through some, a little bit of a headache, a little tired, and you know, going through some stuff, and I didn't properly refer to the name. So, thought I'd like take this time to make a whole episode on Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast to talk about the history of our beloved. Shigeru Miyamoto. I uh, was, am big, big, really inspired by this gentleman. He, uh, his works, <laughs> he, his works, uh, various creative video games have illuminated my childhood. Gave me so much pleasure when I was a kid and and, and when I grew up. Um, I just love his video games even to this day. There's something very childlike, uh, but very uh, delightful about his games there's something very cartoony but and that's what makes them so fun to play is that there's a simplicity to them or graphical uh, cartooniness to that's so fun to listen to and play the sound effects as well as the graphics so though we're going to uh I'm going to review um the history of shigeru miyamoto and i'll make some commentary on what i researched to um the website I'm researching is on wikipedia.org I'm researching Shigeru Miyamoto you can look at it yourself and um, you can follow me as I read or I just listen to me as I do some research on Shigeru Miyamoto it's good information because I can also do some research for my personal um, personal research also working on my website videogamersoasis.com and I'm planning to put this information into like a database of knowledge Shigeru Miyamoto, born November 16th, 1952. He's presently age uh, 68. Born in Sonobi, Kyoto, Japan. Alma mater, Kan- Kanazawa College of Art. Occupation, game designer, game producer, game director. Employer, Nintendo, 1977 to present. Notable work, Donkey Kong, F-Zero, Pikmin, Super Mario, Star Fox, The Legend of Zelda, and Nintendogs. Title, General Manager of Nintendo, EAD. Or, uh, what does that stand for? EAT is, um, EAT... EAD is uh, Nintendo Entertainment Analysis and Development. Nineteen eighty four to twenty fifteen. Oh, okay. I, I didn't read the whole thing. General Manager of Nintendo EAD. That's better. Nintendo Entertainment Analysis and Development. Senior Managing Director at Nintendo. 2001, 2002 to 2015. Representative Director of Nintendo, 2002 to present. 
fellow at Nintendo, 2015 to present. Spouses, Yasuko Miyamoto, children too. Awards, AIAS, Hall of Fame Award, 1998. BAFTA Fellowship, or B-A-F-T-A Fellowship, 2010. I bet BAFTA Fellowship, for, uh, for those who don't know, or the uh, is the Academy Fellowship, a Lifetime Achievement Award presented by the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, BAFTA, in recognition of outstanding achievement in the arts, art forms of moving image. The award is the highest honor the Academy can bestow. Um, Person of Cultural Merit, 2019. Person of Cultural Merit is an official Japanese recognition and honor which is awarded annually to select people who have made outstanding cultural contributions. This distinction is intended to play a role as a part of a system of support measures for the promotion of creative uh, activities in Japan. And he has a little signature that I won't record or I won't repeat. Shigeru Miyamoto, pronounced... Miyamoto Shigeru, born November 16th, 1952, is a Japanese video game designer, producer, and game director at Nintendo, where he serves as one of its representative directors. He is the creator of some of the most acclaimed and best-selling game franchises of all time, including Mario and The Legend of Zelda. Born in Sonobi, Japan, he graduated from Kana- Kanazawa Municipal College of Industrial Arts. He originally sought a career as a manga artist until developing an interest in video games. With the help of his father, he joined Nintendo in 1977 after impressing then President Hiroshi Yamuchi or Yumachi, with his toys. He became the company's first artist, first artist and helped create art for the arcade game Sheriff. He was later tasked with creating a new arcade unit for the company. This eventually led to the 1981 game Donkey Kong. Miyamoto went on to create both Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda, which became massive successes for the Nintendo Entertainment System, NES, for short. The game helped Nintendo and the NES to dominate the console game market, especially after the video game crash of 1983. His games have been flagships of every Nintendo game console, from the arcade machines of the late 1970s to the present day. He managed Nintendo's Entertainment Analysis and Development Software Division, which developed many of the company's first-party titles. As a result of Nintendo President Satori uh, Iwata's death in July 2015, Miyamoto took on the role of acting president alongside Genyo Takeda until being formally appointed as the company's quote-unquote creative fellow a few minute, months later. A little bit about his early life. There's an illustration here of Miyamoto uh, gradually graduated from the Kanazawa College of Art in Ishikawa Prefecture. It reads, Miyamoto was born in the Japanese town of Sunobi, a rural town northwest of Kyoto. On November 16, 1952, his parents were of modest means, and his father taught the English language. From an early age, Miyamoto began to explore the natural areas around his home. On one of these expe- expeditions, Miyamoto came into a, upon a cave, and after days of hesitation, went inside. Miyamoto's expeditions into the Kyoto countryside inspired his later work, particularly The Legend of Zelda, a seminal video game. I remember playing that game when it first came out, and there were a great deal of caves where, where the hero uh, would would go in, and sometimes some of them hidden, and he would sometimes find treasures, or he would sometimes find um, a wise hermit or a, an elderly 
witch who would give him treasures or sell him sell sell him sell things to him or he would gamble for these with these people Miyamoto uh, gradually graduated from Kanazawa Municipal College of Industrial Arts with a degree in industrial design. He had a love of manga and initially hoped to become a professional manga artist before considering a career in video games. He was influenced by manga's classical now how do you pronounce this? Kish Kish Kishoten Kensu Kishoten Ketsu describes the structure and development the, the structure and development of classic Chinese, Korean and Japanese narratives. The structure originated in China and was called Kui Chen Guan Yi and used in Chinese poetry as a four-line composition such as Kui Ju Q I G U E. From there it moved on to other forms. So narrative structure as well as western genre television shows that the title that inspired him to enter the video game industry was the 1978 arcade hit Space Invaders a little bit about his career 1977 to 1984 arcade beginnings and Donkey Kong in the 1970s Nintendo was relatively was a relatively small Japanese company that sold playing cards and other novelties. Although it had started to branch out into toys and games in the 1960s, through a mutual friend, Miyamoto's father arranged an interview with Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi. Yamauchi. After showing some of his toy creations, Miyamoto was hired in 1977 as an apprentice in the planning department. Miyamoto became Nintendo's first artist. He helped create the art for the first original coin operating arcane game, arcade game Sheriff. He first helped the company develop a game with the 1980 release Radar Scope. The game achieved moderate moderate success in Japan, but by 1981, Nintendo's efforts to break into the North American video game market had failed leaving them with a large number of unsold units and on the verge of financial a collapse. Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi decided to convert unsold radar scope units into a new arcade game. He tasked Miyamoto with the conversion, about which Miyamoto has uh, said self-depreciatingly that he uh, and I quote, no one else was available to do the work. Nintendo's head engineer Gunpei Yokoi supervised the project. And here's a quote quotation from Shigeru Miyamoto. And he says, "I feel that I have been very lucky to be a game designer since the dawn of the industry. I am not an in- an engineer, but I have had the opportunities to learn the principles of game design from scratch over a long period of time." and because i am so pioneering and trying to keep at the forefront i have grown accustomed to first creating the very tools necessary for game creation shigeru miyamoto translated it goes on to read miyamoto imagined many characters and plot concepts but eventually settled on a love triangle between a gorilla a carpenter and a girl He meant to mirror the rivalry between comic characters Bluto and Popeye for the woman Olive Oil. Although Nintendo's original intentions to gain rights to Popeye failed, Bluto evolved into an ape, a form Miyamoto claimed as "quote unquote nothing too evil or repulsive." End quote. This ape would be the pet of the main character, a funny hang loose kind of guy. Miyamoto also named Beauty and the Beast and the 1933 film King Kong as influences. Donkey Kong marked the first time that the formulation of video games storyline preceded the actual programming rather than simply being appended as an afterthought. 
Miyamoto had high hopes for his new project, but lacked the technical skills to program it himself. Instead, he conceived he conceived the game's concept, then consulted technicians on whether they were possible. He wanted to make the characters different sizes, move in different manners, and read in various ways. However, Yokoi viewed Miyamoto's original designs as, designs as too complex. Yokoi suggested using seesaws to cap to catapult the hero across the screen. However, this proved too difficult to program. Miyamoto next thought of using sloped platforms and ladders for travel, with barrels for obstacles. When he asked that the game have multiple stages, the four-man programming team comp- complained that he was essentially asking him, them to make the game repeat. But the team eventually success the team eventually successfully programmed the game. When the game was sent to Nintendo of America for testing, the sales manager disapproved of its vast differenti- differentiation with from the maze and shooter games common at the time. When American staffers began naming the characters, they settled on quote-unquote Pauline for the woman after Polly James, a wife of Nintendo's Redmond Washington, warehouse manager Don James. The playable character, initially Jumpman, was eventually named for Mario Segali, the warehouse landlord. These characters' names this, the case character names were printed on the American cabinet art and used in promotion promotional materials. The staff also pushed for an English name and thus it received the title Donkey Kong. I remember reading this in a biography on Shigeru Morimoto in a book that one of the characters or one of the real life people that he named Mario was the warehouse landlord. And I just found that kind of remarkable how uh, his, his landlord I believe who was Italian was an inspiration for for one of the biggest video game superheroes of all time, Super Mario. Moving on, Donkey Kong was a success, leading Miyamoto to work on sequels Donkey Kong Jr. in 1982 and Donkey Kong 3 in 1983. In January 1983, the 1982 Arcade Awards gave Donkey Kong the best single player video game award and the certificate of merit as runner up for the coin op game of the year in his last in his next game he reworked the donkey kong character jump man into mario and gave him a brother luigi he named the new game mario brothers Yokoi convinced Miyamoto to give Mario some superhuman abilities, namely the ability to fall from any height unharmed. Mario's appearance in Donkey Kong overalls, a hat, and a thick mustache led Miyamoto to change aspects of the game to make Mario look like a plumber rather than a carpenter. Miyamoto felt that New York City provided the best setting for the game with its labyrinth subterranean network of sewage pipes. The two-player mode and other aspects of gameplay were partially inspired by an earlier video game entitled Joust. To date, games in the Mario Brothers franchise have been released for more than a dozen platforms. Shortly after, Miyamoto also worked the character sprites and game design for the baseball, tennis, and golf games on the NES. That was from that was the career of of Shigeru Miyamoto, Shigeru, pardon me, Shigeru Miyamoto, and his career from 1977 to 1984, arcade beginnings in Donkey Kong. I'm going to take a little break here, folks. Um, I feel it would be best to have uh, portions in 30-minute in portions. Uh, next, Tune in next episode. I'm going to take a little break from my reading here. 
personal research as well. 1985 to 1989, NES, Famicom, Super Mario Brothers, and The Legend of Zelda. Next episode, we're going to research um, Shigeru Morimoto's career from 1985 to 1989. If you enjoyed, uh, if you enjoyed this uh, little discussion I've had, this little research I've did into Shigeru Morimoto, please leave a like, uh, leave your comments below. Uh, check out my uh, podcast, uh, Anchor.fm forward slash Video Gamers Oasis. This uh, video will be edited and um, uploaded onto a YouTube video on my YouTube channel, Video Gamers Oasis. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you like what you hear and you want to hear more. I'm definitely going to have uh, more opinion pieces. This is just a little bit of research that I actually enjoy. I actually do read, like enjoy reading research papers and research books on vi- the history of video games. So, um, but I will be doing more opinion pieces. I will have more opinions to say. I just right now I don't feel like having many opinions right now. I just want to share some of my, the joys of video games and video game creators. So we're gonna take a break and we'll continue on uh, 1985 to 1989. Uh, we're going to learn about uh, Shigeru Morimoto's career during that time. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Have a great weekend, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you uh, really soon. Have a great holiday season. Bye.